Hello, Nick Williams here, and today I'm going to, we're going to start a new series of videos, and this, this series of videos we call it Compliance Corner. This is the first video in that series, and we're going to discuss unsolicited telephonic contacts and the rules affecting uh, unsolicited telephonic contacts. So, and this is a response to many people inquiring to me. I get a lot of inquiries and I've been getting them endlessly. It's a, it's a constant flow of inquiries regarding unsolicited telephonic contacts. Um, and people have been getting partial information, which partial information, <clears throat> excuse me, partial information is bad information. You're going to see in this video why partial information is bad information. More information, more detailed information is always better information. And that's what I'm going to show you. You're going to get the best compliance advice of any place on the World Wide Web right here. So buckle up. It's going to be a fun ride. No, no, it's not. It's compliance. It's not supposed to be fun. It's, it's supposed to be drudgery but uh, we must stay compliant to maintain our business license. <clears throat> Again, more information, more de detailed information equals better information. And that's the basis of, uh, of my beliefs in, uh, and I want to cover data points. I want to cover all the data points, enough to make an intelligent decision. So you can't make an intelligent decision with one data point. So. We're going to go over the rules for unsolicited contacts per CMS, just briefly, because it's very simple. Uh, the interpretation is really where we have problems, and we're going to address those problems. But most importantly, I'm going to give you what I feel is an adequate solution going forward to address this issue so you can run your business confidently and compliantly. So let's move. Uh, I got the most recent CMS guidelines here and the prohibited activity per CMS. And again, I, they might've put another one out after this, but this is September 5th, 2018. So this month, actually the prohibited activity that is a direct, it takes a direct impact on what, what agents do telemarketing, uh, for Medicare and in relation to Medicare advantage sales, it reads plans slash part D sponsors, and their agents slash brokers may not conduct telephonic activities that include, but are not limited to, the following. Unsolicited calls about other business as a means of generating leads for Medicare plans. In essence, bait and switch uh, strategies. So that makes sense. You don't want to take advantage of people, uh, offer one, th suggest one thing only to have full intentions of selling something else. Normally, that's for a low price product, and then you switch, do a bait and switch to a higher price product. But in this case, it's going from one class of product to another class of product. So that's the rule. That's CMS. Again, the most recent, straight out of the most recent uh, uh, update of, for CMS guidelines. Now, the confusion, as I've seen it recently, is from people reading AHIP guidelines, which are not CMS guidelines, not to be dismissed. It's very important that we address and acknowledge and enter in and include in our data points all sources of information. AHIP is one source of information. Now, it's an important source because this is a uh, certifying organization. It's an association and it's a, uh, it's the membership is uh, in, a, in excess of 1300 companies that are insurance companies or related insurance related companies. And these companies, uh, the, these companies, their senior executives sit on a board of directors on AHIP and, but you wonder why the discrepancy, but AHIP says something different. Marketing representatives may not accept an appointment to sell an MA or Part D product that resulted from an unsolicited contact, regardless of who made the contact, even if the call started based on a non-MA, non-PDP product. So if you're, if you, according to AHIP, if you're there for a Medicare SUP appointment at a client's home 
an outbound call. You're there for Medicare supplement appointment, and they say what I really need help on is Medicare Advantage. In no way, shape, or form can you make that transition. You, according to AHIP, you cannot transition to uh, by having a scope of appointment signed and transition to a Medicare Advantage sale or a PDP sale. So, so we've got two data points. We've got we have CMS, the rules, and we have an interpretation by a certifying uh, organization. You could say there would be confusion there, but let's move on. Let's talk. Let's look at what the companies say. And again, I'm going to give you a a a, a, a best practice to proceed with this uh, moving forward. A, uh, Aetna says CMS developed the following guidelines to clarify restrictions on unsolicited contact with Medicare beneficiaries. All types of Medicare of marketing through unsolicited contact are prohibited by CMS. Aetna is basically saying that follow CMS guidelines. They're directing you to CMS. Cigna Health Spring. And these are all the most recent uh, uh Updates you can see with, uh, if you noticed, uh, if you were looking at the video, uh, you saw that uh, the Aetna was the 2018-2019 producer guides guide. Uh, this is the Cigna HealthSpring email and marketing through unsolicited contacts policy. Again, all recent. And Cigna says, Cigna HealthSpring prohibits the following telephonic activities for all of our benefit advisors and or telesales agents. Bait and switch strategies. Okay. So, again, they're kind of falling right in line with CMS. Humana. This document is dated 10-15-2015, and it is their policy on unsolicited contact uh, and request for future contact form policies. Now, this is the most recent document. This is from the Humana Market Point Library. I think it's Market Point. Yes, it is Market Point. It says it right there in the document. But so, what do they say? Prohibited marketing activities, making unsolicited calls about other business as a means of generating leads for Medicare plans, which they mean Medicare Advantage or PDP. So, bait and switch, falling in line with CMS. Uh, now we have, I was going to say AAR, AARP, but actually it's United Healthcare and their policy, and they specifically have a they specifically include Medicare supplements in their unsolicited contact guidelines. They, they refer to more to CMS guidelines. And it says also prohibits agents from the same unsolicited contact as CMS does. So nobody, none of these companies say AHIP, refer to AHIP guidelines or uh, see AHIP. Okay, on a sidebar regarding United Healthcare being the biggest uh, producer of Medicare supplements uh, in the country, uh, by far, uh, by far the biggest uh, producer of Medicare supplements is that they don't even require a HIP as a. They do not require you to be certified by a HIP to sell their product. So. That's interesting. Somebody with uh, United Healthcare feasibly could go through their entire uh, onboarding training and never ever receive that information. But again, AHIP is not to be discounted because again, it is a major certifying organization. So, what does that leave you as an agent? I mean, I have data points. I have companies. I have a CMS. They all seem to be consistent. And then I have this organization that is an, import, an important organization that has a differing opinion. So what I've done is over time, <clears throat> I have compiled near, I would say 30 to 50 phone calls to Medicare Advantage companies. And I've documented many of these phone calls and I've asked compliance department, uh, I've 
asked, I've, I've actually got a legal department working on this right now because I'm always working on this. Year after year, it's a constant, constant question, and I'm always working on this. I have a local uh, attorney here in Greenville, South Carolina, that I've consulted with on this. I have uh, spoken again with compliance departments for... I've got interpretations from uh, the major FMOs, some ma- some the, of the major FMOs in regionally and nationally, um, and I have I'm always confirmed in it's it's always confirmed that if you're in this situation, that you scope and proceed with a compliant presentation. They've actually gotten more and more liberal in this direction, where they've removed the 48 hour rule and they've gone to. Uh, which was you could scope, but then you'd have to wait 48 hours. Now they want you to help the client at that time. And that's really what this comes down to is helping the client. So that's important, an important point that you should understand. Now, what have I, I've also gone further just recently within the last 24 hours in preparation for this video, and I have called three of three of the major companies and got the same answers I always get now but this time I made sure to 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 uh, get the time of the call the person's name I, I got the reference number of the call which you can do with most of these Medicare Advantage companies and and I gave them this scenario on an outbound call for a non Medicare Advantage product I'm, it's requested of me that I help the client, the Medicare beneficiary in the home at the time of the meeting, the scheduled meeting, again, from an outbound unsolicited call that they want help with Medicare Advantage. And I'm repeatedly told that what to do in that situation, and I have this confirmed from compliance departments as recently as yesterday. So today would be the 20. 20- 7th of September, yesterday being the 26th, of course, that in fact, if that is the situation that you scope that person and proceed with a compliant presentation, and that's how you do it. There's no gray area with the companies. So we have CMS, we have written guidelines from the companies, and then we have verbal confirmed guidelines. So What does that mean? It means pick up the phone. As I've said before, don't listen to some knucklehead on the internet. And don't listen to me either. (laughs) Pick up the phone, and I've said this over and over, and call the companies. And when you call the companies, tell them your situation. Hey, you could do this when you're sitting down with a client. Tell them the situation and ask them what to do. Let them tell you. Document the phone call. Document who you talk to. Document the the time of the day. Document the, the call reference number. So... Listen, I've been in this, I first got licensed in, let's see, August of 1989. And I've held various positions over the years. I've run departments. I've run, uh, uh, I've basically run a a lending uh, institute, not a lending institution, but a branch for a lending institution. And I, uh, I'm compliant driven. I started this in this business, crunching numbers on spreadsheets. So I'm very, very anal about these things. And I've navigated this whole compliance world in many different capacities over the 30 years. uh, This upcoming August will be 30 years with no blemishes on my record. So I know compliance. I understand compliance. And you can't go on what it says in one spot and, and base everything on that. You have to look at data points. You have to get all the data. And this isn't all the data, but this is more data. It's better data than you see elsewhere. And it's and better data en- enables you to make a more a more intelligent decision. So again, the best practice for you going forward is to call the company. As I said, don't listen to some knucklehead on the internet. Call your compliance company. Call your FMO. Document these calls. I've got calls documented. I just uh, numerous calls documented, and uh, I could do it today. I could pick up the phone right now and do it as we speak. At this, as I as I uh, record this video, I could do it right now and get the same answer. There's consistency that creates 
that creates, a, a, in essence, a rule that, that, that I must follow in my mind. That what these companies tell me repeatedly over and over and over again, which CMS says, don't bait and switch. Okay, that's the point. They don't want you going out and uh, abusively baiting and switching people, but they do want you to help Medicare beneficiaries. And I believe that's why they're loosening guidelines across the board. And you can see it. They did it recently with the, the scope of appointment form. Uh, and now they've just done it with the educational event form. They're making it easier for Medicare beneficiaries to access Medicare Advantage plans and PDP plans. Listen, have a compliant and productive Medicare Advantage se season. And don't shortchange yourself because you're not digging deep enough to get the correct answers. And call those insurance companies and get get document get document these calls. But listen, that's it. I hope that this is helpful for you. It actually was helpful for me to a little deep dive in this a little bit. But uh, again, have a profitable Medicare Advantage selling season.